today we are going to be looking at five of the worst cars of all time, ranging from marketing failures to literal bombs. Starting off with the G-Wiz, a small electric vehicle produced by Micromobility Systems. The idea behind the G-Wiz was to offer a compact, lightweight vehicle with simple design and minimal features. It was powered by a small electric motor and had a limited range, making it perfect for short commutes within urban areas. The G-Wiz was marketed as a practical and affordable solution for those who were concerned about efficiency and emissions. However, the G-Wiz had some drawbacks, most notably being its exceptionally limited range, which meant often it wasn't even enough to do those inner city commutes. The G-Wiz's case was not helped by the popular TV show Top Gear, constantly banging on about how horrible it was. But it was for good reason. This has no redeeming feature. It has no headroom, it has no legroom, it has no space for a passenger alongside me, and God has not yet created a creature that would fit in the back. The second thing it didn't have going in its favour was the poor build quality. Users who had G-Wizzes found that the plastic exterior often suffered damage over time and wasn't up to scratch. Finally, the car was underwhelming to drive. It had very little power, which made it feel very underwhelming when you put your foot on the accelerator. Ultimately, a combination of these features led to it not being very popular. But the company didn't get sued, so I'm going to give this a 2 out of 10 fail. Next up we have the Ford Edsel, a mid-sized SUV produced by the Ford Motor Company in 1957. The idea behind the Ford Edsel was it would be a mid-sized, mid-range SUV to fill the gap between popular Ford models and the Mercury models. Unfortunately, the marketing strategy Ford used for this vehicle was not widely received. It was widely criticised and the name itself was controversial. Advertising did not resonate with the customers and the Edsel was positioned as a different car, but the car was not very well received. The second thing that the Ford Edsel didn't have going for it was the higher price. It was priced much higher than most consumers expected, basically pricing it out against competitors. The styling also wasn't great, which meant people didn't have the wow factor that often sells cars. Finally, the Ford Edsel had some quality issues, which meant basically there was no reason to buy this car. Ultimately, the combination of high price, poor styling, poor quality control, and just generally not being a very exciting car led to this car's complete failure. 3 out of 10 fail. It cost them a lot of money, but Ford's still going strong. Next up, the DeLorean DMC-12. This was supposed to dethrone the greats and be the next big supercar. The DeLorean DMC-12 had the wow factor. It had the gullwing doors. It had the will to be on a poster, but it just didn't have the quality or performance to back it up. This was due to a multitude of reasons. But most notably, John DeLorean was a cocaine trafficker and therefore lost a lot of money for the company and ultimately financial difficulties meant they pushed the car to market before it was ready with an underpowered engine and poor quality finishing which led many of them to rust. Fortunately for the DeLorean though, the Back to the Future film came out and suddenly it became a very desirable piece. I'm going to give this a 5 out of 10 because the company went bust, but now everyone wants a DeLorean. Next, we have the Ford Pinto, the holy grail of automotive failures. The Ford Pinto was supposed to be an economically friendly and cheaper car during the rising gas prices of 1971 to 1980s. The Ford Pinto was a fantastic car, and people who drove it thought it was quite a good car. The issue that the Ford Pinto faced was the fuel tank. 
The fuel tank positioning was in the rear of the car, which meant if your car got rear-ended, it would quite literally explode, often killing the driver and passengers. This is not something you want on your car, which led to the car's failure. I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10 fail, because it actually killed people. Next up, we have the Tesla Cybertruck. It was supposed to replace all pickup trucks. It was supposed to be the next big thing, a sleek, beautiful, do-anything, go-anywhere truck. Tesla was going to sell it at an affordable price and make consumers happy. Unfortunately, things started going downhill right at the beginning with the Tesla Cybertruck launch event, when they tried to demonstrate how strong the windows were and they both broke. And things didn't get better. When the car finally did release, four years after it was supposed to, there was no end of quality issues and trucks genuinely falling apart. Oh. Did something just break off? I think we broke the grill the rear bumper off. The rear bumper, look at the Cybertruck. Later down the line, features that were supposed to come on the base models of the cars just didn't work. Ultimately, the poor quality, poor build design, and cars literally falling apart, I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10 fail. I'm rating it the same as the Ford Pinto, because this car is genuinely causing deaths by shedding large chunks of metal on the highway, and could well spell the end for Tesla. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. That really helps me out. If you don't want to subscribe, that's perfectly fine. See you next week. Man, I should have included Fisker in this video. They, they, they need part two.